Mitochondria are one of the most important parts of the body. Unfortunately, while we can make new mitochondria over time, the mitochondria and cells age and even the new mitochondria are eventually defective. This is one of the biggest problems in human aging. Mitochondria have very delicate DNA structures that cannot be easily repaired, unlike the DNA in the cell nucleus, which can be. Over time they age and there is simply no way to get new ones. Or is there? What you are seeing is donor stem cells delivering new mitochondria to the rest of the body. While foreign stem cells could never make proper replacement cells in your body, mitochondria are similar enough between people and even between other species that the human body can make use of them. While we once thought mitochondria stay inside a cell till they die, we now know they have a surprising hidden life we never suspected. What the hell are you doing in the bathroom day and night? Why don't you get out of there and give someone else a chance? You may not know this, but stem cells generally exist in hypoxic areas of the body, that is, areas without oxygen. This initially seemed very puzzling to me, but in recent times it all came to make sense. For example, when no-no particles that I can't mention by name enter the bloodstream, this will damage cells, and this includes your white blood cells and the all-important, all-critical T-cells that control your immune system. If your stem cells were in an area with ready blood flow, they would take on damage every time you had a night out drinking, anytime you ate processed food, especially vegetable oil, and even when you just had a glass of tap water. In no time at all, your stem cells would be just as bad off as the cells they're called on to replace, and you would just fall apart and ultimately pass away. While you can't sign up for mitochondrial transplants yet, Many people are inadvertently receiving just that when they get stem cell treatments. Since your own DNA is required to make new, properly functioning cells, these stem cells cannot replace your own. However, they can and do lend healthy young mitochondria to your cells. This has only relatively recently been discovered, but cells from other people, or even from animals or insects, would also work just as well in your body Though I am sure there will be a side effect or two that has yet to be ironed out. I'd like to become the first insect politician. Thankfully, these expensive procedures are not the only way to get new mitochondria. A fast of 72 plus hours will release stem cells, and these stem cells can repair the entire body including the heart and brain, in spite of what many doctors will still tell you. This is also required to make T-cells in the thymus. It requires hundreds of stem cells to make just one of these master controllers of the immune system because they have to be trained to function just perfectly. And that means that most adults simply never make new ones because they're just not making very many stem cells. This is a serious problem because they are required for your immune system to fight cancer and autoimmune disease and also to respond to pathogens. And unlike stem cells, they float freely through the body and they're susceptible to damage from chemotherapy and other safe and defective toxins, not to mention all the arsenic and the rice and grains that you may be eating. Of course, you can only do so much fasting but there's another way to release stem cells without any effort and with only a small initial investment in a red light near-infrared device. Now the mechanisms are quite a few different mechanisms. The main mechanism revolves around the mitochondria. So the uh, cytochrome C oxidase, which is unit four in the mitochondrial respiratory chain is accepted as a chromophore for red and near-infrared light and the idea is that you get more oxygen consumption, more ATP, the mitochondrial membrane potential goes up. Um, other things happen but 
one important thing is that the mitochondrial metabolism switches from glycolysis back towards oxidative phosphorylation, which is important because it has a few effects on the, on the whole metabolism. Um, you get a lot of signaling happens based on this mitochondrial activity. You get uh, nitric oxide released, you get ATP and cyclic AMP, you get a brief burst of reactive oxygen species. These activate transcription factors, so June FOS is AP1, um, I kappa B allows NF kappa B to go to the nucleus, and these transcription factors can trigger the expression of over a hundred different genes, which is a long-lasting effect. So these proteins that are triggered by this, these transcription factors will last for hours, days, and even weeks. So a single exposure to light can have long-lasting effects. As I said, this switch of glycolysis to oxidative phosphorylation is important for two reasons. One is that stem cells are activated stem cells in their hypoxic niche carry out glycolysis but when the mitochondria are activated they need oxygen so they have to get out of their niche when they can undergo proliferation and differentiation programs the second effect of this glycolysis to oxfos switch is anti-inflammatory so macrophages have an m1 phenotype and a pro-inflammatory carry out glycolysis when OXFOS is activated, they switch to the M2 anti-inflammatory phenotype. And if these happen to be microglia in the brain, they can undergo phagocytosis, for instance, disposing of amyloid plaque that clogs up the brain tail. But we did discover quite a few interesting things about how shining light on the head has beneficial effects. We summarize them in this diagram here. So there's a lot of different processes here, and there is positive evidence for all of them, actually. Keep in mind, though, the mitochondria in your stem cells do take damage over time, even if not nearly as much as in your cells that are exposed to the blood supply. No matter how strong your mitochondria were when you were born, they take a beating over time and eventually they just don't quite work right. Beep beep! Out of my way! I am a motorist! If you take care of them though, you can delay this as long as possible. Alpha ketoglutarate is a molecule in the body which is largely there to protect mitochondria and stem cells, but its production dwindles with age. This is not something you can really get in food, but it is available in supplement form, and I take three grams a day in the form of AAKG, or arginine alpha-ketoglutarate. This form will also provide the body with alpha-ketoglutarate, and it's well absorbed, but it's much cheaper than calcium alpha-ketoglutarate. Fasting also raises alpha-ketoglutarate levels, which is one of the ways that it helps preserve the body from the damage of aging over time. It also helps stimulate mitochondrial fusion, which is a process where mitochondria combine to repair their DNA, and then they later split as needed. This is sort of like how humans reproduce in a certain sense. Vinegar also aids in mitochondrial health, and the nutrients taurine and glycine are very effective in preventing mitochondrial damage. Keep in mind though, you need these nutrients every day to keep your mitochondria protected. That is one of the main reasons that diet can affect your health, and I talk extensively about how to get these nutrients from food in other videos. However, it's probably both easier and cheaper to just supplement them, and that's really the only way you can increase your alpha-ketoglutarate levels too. Now I take 6 grams of taurine a day and 6 grams of glycine. I also take 3 grams of arginine alpha-ketoglutarate every day and 60 milliliters of vinegar neutralized with 1 teaspoon of potassium bicarbonate. This is a remake of an old video that was pretty poor quality and very short. And back then I predicted we would see mitochondrial donation as a hot topic in the future. And already quite a few people are talking about it, though it has not trickled down to the mainstream health influencers yet. 
Aside from me, of course, if you can forgive me for tooting my own horn a little bit. Say things like, I was about to say that very same thing, or I was just about to have that same idea. Hey, at least I didn't declassify Pluto from planet status. Way to make all the little kids cry, Neil. That make you feel like a big man? 